after working as a software developer for a couple of years, I figure out the formula that helps me to learn any technology faster and easier. I wish I knew that formula when I started learning to code back in the days. I read a lot of different articles and watched different YouTube videos about the most effective way of learning to code. Some say that practice is important, some say that theory is important, and they are both right, but nobody tells you how to join theory and practice together to get the best result. My name is Boris, I'm a software engineer from Tel Aviv and if you watch this video till the end you will get a fully working solution that will help you to learn not only coding but any technology faster. Despite the fact that I got to this formula myself by trying different learning strategies, not so long time ago I found out that this is an existing scientific model of learning and there is a proof that it really works. David Allen Kolb is an American educational theorist whose works, interests and publications focus on experimental learning. In the early 70s, Kolb and Ron Fry developed the experimental learning model or easily ELM composed of four elements. Concrete experience, observation of and reflection on that experience, formation of abstract concepts, testing the new concepts, and then repeat. The spiral of learning can start from any of these stages, but typically begins with a concrete experience. Just imagine a real coding problem. You can try to find the solution of this problem by using something that you have already learned before. Or you may search for a solution on the website like Stack Overflow and you will probably find some code that seems to solve your problem and you will copy-paste it to your project. I mean, on this stage, you try to use all your relevant experience to solve the problem. The second stage is observation and reflection. You run the code and you see that it fails for some edge cases. And after defining these edge cases, you are getting to the third step. And here you form the abstract concept based on your reflection. You may Google it, you may read some articles or even ask your teammates. Then you get to the last point when you change the code that you have copy pasted from Stack Overflow to your project, make the change according to the new knowledge that you have and you run your code again. If your code doesn't fail and it works as expected, so that's it, you are done. But if not, you are automatically entering this loop again and getting to the first point of the concrete experience. This is a kind of an infinite loop, depending on how complex and difficult your problem is. Actually, what you usually do, you run the code, try to analyze the result, you get some you knowledge and do you implement that knowledge on practice? In my opinion, every software engineer enters this loop while working on some task. There's another example of how you may use the same model when you need to fix the bug in the system. Let's say I know the code in the system, I know what it should do, I run it and I see the unexpected results. On the next stage, I find the place where the things go wrong and I try to figure out what the problem is. On the third stage, I'm trying to find the solution of how to fix this bug. Of course, I can try to Google my problem, I can uh, try to find the solution on Stack Overflow, I can try to look for working examples inside maybe some other modules, I can ask my teammates, I mean, there are different opportunities and different ways to grab the new knowledge to fix this bug. Then I understand how to change the code and I make the changes and probably I even make it work, I implement my changes, I see that my fix doesn't work and I'll repeat my loop again. As you may see, this formula is widely used by software engineers almost for everything, learning a new framework, troubleshooting, and so on. But how should you use it while learning to code? The first thing that you should do, you should to set a real goal, a blocker for yourself, to create a kind of a wall that you can't break because of lack of knowledge. So you'll have to define a real problem, find some possible solution, and experiment with it. A good example of such a wall could be creating your own simple mobile app or solving a coding puzzle on a website like LeetCode. Or even going to an interview for a software engineer position. Every interview is a classic example of experimental learning model. Just think of it, you go to your tech interview, analyze the questions, you google something, you learn something on the way, then you go to another interview and you already implement your knowledge there. It's a, it's a classical experimental learning model. The bad example of the goal while learning to code is I want to learn this particular programming language. There is no real
real problem here. The task definition is not clear, so you can't use Kolb's model here to learn to code. Another example of a bad goal to implement experimental learning model is I want to become a software developer and earn a lot of money. Becoming a software developer is a complex process that should be broken to different small steps. Learning is only one of the steps. But this is what my next video is about. So see you there.